Welcome to another episode of uh, Coffee with Sam So. I'm here with uh, Simon Paul from Castilla Copper. Uh, we're here at um, the Mill Point Cafe Bookshop. Um, fantastic place, actually. Um, but, you know, it's, Simon, maybe you just give us an intro about yourself and your, your experience, your history. Yeah, thanks, Noel. Um, well, uh, yeah, my name's Simon Paul. I'm Perth born and bred and educated in Perth. Um, I spent a four or five years in the profession, uh, the accounting profession. Uh, and then in 1995, I went to Africa, West Africa with Austral. Um, I was based in Accra, Ghana. I uh, traveled extensively around West Africa to Guinea, Mali, um, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal. Um, there's probably a few or more that I can't remember. Uh, Burkina Faso. Um, setting up the legal framework and doing research into uh, how we can legally operate in country. Uh, during that time I met with a number of explorers and, and mine operators. At the end of that time I then moved to um, uh, Tanzania that was with Sandvik AB as part of their mining and construction division. Uh, initially went there for a period of nine months to help them get established in country and left 12 years later. During that course of that time I was promoted to the position of managing director for East Africa and that gave, that they put a number of countries underneath my, my responsibility and, and care. Um, Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Burundi, Rwanda, Sudan, uh, even, even Somalia, although I didn't get that far. Uh, after that, uh, I think it was the 2012, 2013, returned to Australia and took up a position with uh, Folk, which is a Danish uh, emergency response company, was their CEO for three to four years, and now I'm with Costello Copper as their managing director. I mean, Castillo, I, I, as I mentioned to you before, I, I did a ride up in Castillo um, late last year, and I think the, the, the emphasis was is copper, and I think you guys are still in copper. Yes. Um, it would be really good to get sort of your, your view on where copper is. You know, Dr. Copper is always a, you know, well, well talked about, everyone yep. knows about it, yep. everyone knows what it does, you know. Yeah, good question. Uh, from a mid-term to long-term perspective, I think the demand for copper is incredibly strong. Every time you look up and try and look over the, the hill into the future, it's about power generation, it's about power storage, it's about electrical power usage. With the current um, uh, supply profile, I think there's, the, the demand is certainly being outstripped by supply. And I think that trend's gonna continue for, for a significantly long period of time. And I'm talking decades, not not this, not today, not tomorrow, not the next six months. And I'm just thinking about all the uses for copper. Um, there's, all the, there's all those um, articles about how much copper an electrical car uses versus a domestic car. Um, there's also discussions about uh, maybe um, um, freight vessels should no longer be diesel powered, they should be electrical, and that makes good sense. Mm. Again, a lot of copper is going to be needed in those constructions. Um, I'm also a fan of uh, hydrogen fuel cells. The hydrogen fuel cell, if it, it, if it you know, gets across the line, is still an electric engine. It's still going to need copper. Um, the problem with surge capacity of power is that you turn it up, you turn it down, you can't store it. People will need copper batteries for this, for the foreseeable future, to store uh, to store power. So for all those reasons, in the mid to long term, I, I think copper's super sexy. No, I agree. I think um, when, when we had all these lithium booms and all this, and I always said, look, I, I like, I call them base metals, but it's copper, nickel, mm -hmm. iron, really, because it's the foundation of everything, really. Yep. I, I'm also a hydrogen um, fan, mm -hmm. and you are right, hydrogen is not hydrogen, it's actually an electrical thing. And it actually works well with um, the electric engine, the lithium story, because um, hydrogen is your fuel effectively. Your battery, your electric battery is your, you know, it, that then drives. Yeah. Yep. So they actually work well together. Yep, um, exactly. And so they actually complement each other in the future. I think, I mean, look, China's a good example. They've spent billions on this. They don't spend billions for <laughs> because they felt like spending billions. Yep. So it is, it is in, in their eyes for the future and copper and it's, it's a big play. I mean, I, I, I've i watched this industry and there's always this talk about the supply, there's no supply, there's, 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 the, the stockpiles are decreasing, but the price differential isn't that great. So, I mean, we're seeing a bit change in nickel now, but mm -hmm. where there's a oomph in, in, in that price, yeah. maybe that will carry on, yeah. maybe it won't, but I think you see in, in copper, I think you, saw, you see in zinc too, mm -hmm. everyone's saying there's a big decline in stockpiles, yeah. Yeah. But we're not seeing, we're seeing price move, yeah. but not, not significant to, in relation to, to the proportion, yeah. And that's why I think there's a real opportunity for copper, exactly yeah. for that reason, because yeah. I think it is only a matter of time. 
it yeah. is only a matter of time. Yeah, that's, right. um, that's why I like copper. Uh, I mean, um, region when I wrote about you guys, I like the, the your Kangai thing in New South Wales. And, mm -hmm. um, so there is that story there. Um, it, it, all the big copper story comes from South America. Mm -hmm. We have a few here and there, but the rest really comes from that that sector. I'm going to have to interject. up. You, you can't talk about copper without talking about the, the copper belt in Zambia. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, I, my, my apologies. <laughs> true, true. Um, but I, I, I sort of don't think of Africa as, I think it's too hard, especially, I mean, when I did my listing, I and mean, we raised three million and plus, but I sort of said, we're never going to go out that way because our pockets is not deep enough, yep. unless you've got experience. Yep. Like yourself, you, you, you're familiar with the area, you know how to move, but when you're foreign to it, I think... Yep. It, it's intimidating. Yeah. It's intimidating. I get yeah. that. I get you, that. And, and you would probably spend a lot more trying to figure it out than, than anything else. Um, so in, in terms of the, the company, I'm pretty sure the market understands there's a, a new life, new, new, new birth been happening. Maybe you can give us an, a brief on that. All right, well, um, there's certainly a, 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 a new team being coordinated at the moment. We are, we're off the trading halt, um, which came off a couple of weeks ago, just, just as after I started. Um, and, and we have this, uh, we call it the, the three pillar strategy. Kangai, the copper mine in New South Wales is very, very much part of that. As most people are aware, it's probably recorded some of the highest copper grades ever recorded in Australia. Uh, the, 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 the other, the, the, I'll call it the second pillar because there's no order to them, they're just uh, propping up the entire strategy is uh, uh, Mount Oxide, which is in northern, northwestern uh, Queensland. Uh, had some magnetic surveys over that and the copper grades at surface are incredible. They found a mat massive sulphide that's indicative of, of uh, copper mineralization. And then there's these five properties in or around the copper belt in Zambia, which um, are looking really, really good. Really, really good. I read somewhere that you know, so some stockpiles you had is, is in Kangai, isn't it? Absolutely. Because the copper mine is so old, they've used old technology to mine it. And if it wasn't above a certain grade that we would find incredibly enticing now, they put it to one side because their recovery methods were so, I don't use basic or primitive, but it was 100 years ago. Mm. Um, so the, the, these stockpiles are there and, and we think they're upwards of several percentage in, in, in copper. Also, the, the, uh, the tailings that are there, or the slag, is also very high in copper because the recoveries were that poor. So we've got the overburden that was uh, moved to one side because it was the higher grade stuff below, and then we've got the, the slag or the, um, uh, the tailings left over from imperfect re recoveries. Um, there's a very strong push to monetize those. Uh, right now we have the expiration lease, we're working with the regulator to get a mining lease. And um, I, yeah, we're having discussions with that today, tomorrow, the next day. It's, it's, it's towards the top of the agenda. I think it's, it's, a, it's a good sector to be in. I mean, copper is, um, I mean, easier to, to sort of foresee the future and, mm -hmm. and, it, and there's a real need. I remember um, reading uh, Warren Buffett talking about gold and you can never understand why people are so into gold. He's not into gold, but mm -hmm. that's just a point of view, I guess, in, in that sense. But one of the things that, that um, I, I'm intrigued, I, I don't have a lot of experience in copper, so what is the grade that makes people excited? Um, the average percentage of a mine in Australia is 0.6% copper. Uh, so anything below that, and it's marginal, you can still do it, but you're probably not going to get the reward as everyone else. 0.6 is the average grade, so there's some above that. And uh, anything, anything with a one in front of it, uh, people start to smile. Is there a volume implications to that 0.6? Do you need a certain size to make... You do, you do. There is there is a critical mass. It's also got to do with the underlying geology, and this is where I my, my expertise is going to fall off the table pretty quickly. There, there's certain different sorts of uh, ore that is more attuned to the recovery of the copper. So it's not a set function of um, volume times percentage. It's really got to do with the extraction methods that you can get the the, the 0.6 out of. We are talking in tons, um, probably millions of tons to make make it viable. It's not it's not like I've got a I've got a a, a truckload of it. I mean, I'm interested that, you know, the fact that you guys are looking at the Zambian stuff, a lot of this, um, uh, obviously, you know, you, you, you did highlight the point, I, I actually forgot about it, that Zambia is the place to be in terms of copper, in terms of great too, because as you get a lot, whereas the ones in South America tend to be size-wise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, is, is that, do you think that is the way forward for the company, that, that Zambia thing, obviously everything takes time, so we, yeah. we, we yeah. sort of understand. Uh, 
I view it very much like we've got these three really good pillars, really good uh, projects, and it's almost where we're in the race for a win or a place. We can either get we can either get the first prize, or we can get first or second, or third, or all, all three coming first. Um, it's, it's so there's not at this point in time because the results we're getting out of Zambia, there's a lot of excitement around it. Uh, doesn't take away from the convertibility of the stockpiles and the cash availability, as I view it, in uh, in Kangi, and it doesn't take away from the um, Mount Oxide um, in initial reports we're getting from there. So at this point in time, uh, Zambia's got its nose in front, but not necessarily at the complete exclusion of the other two. It'd be silly to back one when we've got yeah. these three stallions in, in, in the stable. Yeah. I, think, I think that's a nice philosophy. I mean, when I looked at these things, the first thing that came to me is this stockpile. It's, it's easy money. I mean, there's no such thing as easy money, but it's easier money. Um, if you can monetize that, you can move that a lot. I mean, yeah. As I mentioned to someone the other day, it's, from our perspective, um, it's effectively free dig. We don't have to drill and blast it. Mm. It's, you get there with, a, with a, a digger and a dozer and a couple of trucks and away it goes. Um, that cost structure is very, very kind compared to mining it. Um, and we already have a, a, a preliminary agreement in with Noble Group you know, to get this going. The, our, our point at the moment is the regulator. So once we get through that, um, I'll be out there with my shovel. I know, I know it worked because uh, Artemis Resources did a similar thing with their stockpile. Yeah. I forget the name of the project, but it was, um, I actually walked on, on it. And I was there when they were just effectively just loading up trucks and driving it off and selling it. Yeah, as you see, you know. And I saw when I when I saw that on your presentation, well, I know it works. It's just a case of hurdles to get over and you know get all your ducks lined up and then you're off and running, you know. But it's an easy cash flow. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, as I said, if it's not on the top of the agenda, it's certainly on the top two or three. Yeah. Yeah. Is is there something you you know? Mount Oxide, obviously, I, I had a quick look at the stuff. Um, I mean, that part of the world is obviously um, in that space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it, it's, it's, can you tell us a bit about the project itself? Um, I, I do appreciate you're very new to the good. job. <laughs> and, and it is also early days in the construction. Yeah. What, what, what I can say, it, it is, in, as you said, it's in a good neighbourhood for uh, copper mineralisation. We have had an um, electromagnetics aerial survey done. It has identified a sizable uh, anomaly of uh, sulfuric oxide, I think it is, I can't remember the exact that terminology given to it. And we've also taken some chips at surface, mm -hmm. and these were in the, that right zone that started with the one. Mm -hmm. um, so those together is really exciting. What we really need to do is get some drills on the ground yeah. and, and actually test what's actually there. But if we're going to have a good news, if we're going to have a, a good news story out of this, all the all the stories leading up to it are heading that way. Just, just another note, um, Simon, just, just so that people sort of understand where you guys are at. You know? mm. what's, what's the corporate activity going forward for you guys? We're, we're, we're extremely busy at the moment to complete the, the London listing um, with the LSE. Uh, we're hoping to get that knocked on the head by mid-quarter four this year. Um, we find that the, the, um, the investors coming out of London are, are probably attuned to copper a bit more maybe in the Australian market, certainly more attuned to Africa, a bit more comfortable, it's probably less exotic. Um, so w once we get that done, we'll be dual listed both on the ASX and also on the LSE. That's, that's very good because I, I, um, I do know that the investors out of the, that part of the world treat Africa like their own backyard. Um, and I think that the point that you mentioned that they're very comfortable with Africa, mm. um, I think that's, that's a good point to have. Um, because I mean, the likes of myself, we are so sort of like, you know, don't go to Africa, don't go to South America. <laughs> but, but I know that North Americans love South America, it's like mm -hmm. backyard, and um, it, as well as the Europeans, the Europeans yeah. You know, so I mean, it's, it's, it's a fantastic story. I mean, I buys because I did look at you guys and I knew what you guys were about, and, and I know that the, the, and I like copper, I like the copper space, and I also like the sort of exploration, mm. you know, stage things. But um, I want to thank you for giving us time. And, um, maybe sort of, it's, it's a good, nice story to follow up in future. If, if you know, when things move on and you, we can catch up and get an update from, from yourself. Good, excellent. Looking All right. Thank Thanks, you, Simon. Lovely to meet you. Okay. Cheers.